guys, welcome back to another episode of Head Over Heels, a podcast where we explore what it's like to be a modern Asian woman, safe space for honest conversations, and to remind you to fall head over heels for yourself first and always. I'm Maggie. And I'm Vanessa. And welcome back, guys. That's right. So um, we actually put up a poll on Instagram mm-hmm. a couple of weeks ago no wait just a week ago yes. on the topics you would like us to talk about yeah we got so many replies yes. we loved it <laughs> we loved it so much yeah that we're we're thinking about it definitely it's in the loops for sure and yeah. in fact some of you we understand the poll um um words capacity is very limited so yeah. you even dm'd us on the stories you want us to share. We really appreciate it. Just want to put it out there that we hear you. We see you, girl. Yes, um, keep them coming up. anytime. Not only when we ask. Anytime you feel like something is bugging you. Well, our Instagram page is a place where you can just share. Yes, honestly, keep it real. Because mm-hmm. we love it. We love reading it, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, today we are actually going to be talking about the toxicity of social media. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Which I'm sure a lot so of us can relate relatable. to. And also how we can consume it consciously and with a good intention. Easier said than done. That's why we're going to talk about it today. And um, yeah, the reason why we are talking about this now is because it was kind of inspired by something that happened to me last week. Yes, tell me about what happened last week because I went on, it's, I'm hardly on Instagram yeah. on the weekends uh, and I, I, I so happened to be on Instagram and I went on uh Maggie's story and I was just like what is this girl on about she's yeah. on this like um, educational uh, story time <laughs> so well, tell, I do tell that us a lot, what though. happens yeah. so basically I was on my explore page on Instagram and I stumbled upon this post of this girl posting about it's a boomerang of her smoking okay so I was like hey why is she smoking I click onto it it was a vape or e-cigarette like, it was not like a traditional cigarette cigarette but it was and it was clearly a sponsored post okay so and the caption bugged me a lot okay um, it says that you know you can quit smoking today with this particular brand and that it is a healthier alternative to smoking Mm. That's that's I'm I'm not reading the whole thing, but this was part of the caption. And I don't think this should be normalized, one. And two, I don't have anything personal against her. It was not a personal attack. It was just me not being okay with the message that she was putting out. Yeah. That, you know, smoking this is a healthier alternative because this thing is basically e-cigarette slash vape. It still contains nicotine. And yes. it is also stated there which means it can be addictive. It means that it still contains toxic substances, meaning it's not healthy, full stop. So the so word healthy- false advertising. Exactly. So the word healthy shouldn't even be in the same um, sentence or, or same page as this particular product, right? That's so, true. So that was my problem with it. How young is this girl? Um, yeah, good question. I, I was like, okay, why does this bug me so much? Yeah. So I went on further, kind of dig deeper before uh-huh. even I started talking about it. She's only 20 years old. Wow, 20 and talking about... Yeah, so for me, mm. it was not okay. Maybe, you know, it's it's a personal choice. I'm not saying that she shouldn't smoke. It's yeah. really her choice. Mm-hmm. I know people who started smoking when they're 14, 15. Um, it's really your choice, your life. I don't really care. You deal with the consequences yourself. But putting it out there on a public platform and kind of like, in some ways, you are encouraging it. Would mm. you put something that you don't like? No. If you like something, you put it out there. You kind of expect people to also reciprocate and buy into it right yeah. in some ways let's be mm-hmm. honest you know why would you put out something that you don't don't like yeah but maybe this girl is also really young oh yes so for sure that's why she was probably unaware and unconscious of what she's doing which is why what you did was really good as well yeah i you reached didn't out to her oh no i didn't reach out to her she oh, reached didn't. out okay. to me so ah, okay. apparently my post um got her a lot of dms okay in some ways, a lot of hate, actually. Oh, no. A lot of people notified her. And the post has since been taken down. Mm. And she did reach out to me, this girl. And I really appreciate it. No hate whatsoever. I was not trying to hate her or trying to get people to hate her. Yeah, I could so, tell from your Yeah, so Instagram. the way I put it out, I knew my intention was just to create awareness that, hey, this is not okay. Why is this happening? And um, through her DM, she apologized. And she told me she has since taken it down. And she also said that, thank you for, you know, advising me. I was not really advising, but, you know, um, the fact that I put it out there, she realized, oh, actually, yeah, I was definitely not very um, concise with my message. And it was a bit misinterpreted. And also, it's a misinformation. 
right? So she knew that only because I said it. So I really appreciate that she reached out and we had a really nice conversation. I said, you know, you've got a good following. You've got this platform that's great. Put it to good use and do know that whatever you put out has some sort of implications all from, to the people that follows you. And most of them are most likely people who are really, really young still, who don't know any better. Mm -hmm. So be aware of what you put out because you never know who is looking at it, who is looking at you as a role model and who's trying to be you. I think it's really, really important to have that awareness, especially if you have a platform that can make a difference. So you became Jeje Maggie lah, basically. Some ways lah. I mean, <laughs> uh, in the social media realm, we've never met each other. Right. I don't know who she is. I don't know what she does. I just know she's on Instagram and I was not okay with what she posted. And I really like that we managed to have a really civil conversation and not like, how dare you talk this about yeah. me? You know, it's my job. It's a sponsored post. No, it was not like that. In I respect fact, this young girl for being very um, yeah. civil about it. Correct. Actually. And she was being aware about it too. And it, that's nice. Yeah. So yeah, that was what happened to me and her over the weekend. And I think it ended on a really nice note mm. that it was taken down. And she knew why she took it down. Not mm. because she received hate. Yeah. She realized that, hey, you're right. It's not a healthy alternative. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. So I will, you know, reread into what I put out the next time. Good job. Mm. So social media is, it's like, what do you call this? A platform for both good and bad. It yes. really depends on how you consume it. And if anything, it really has elevated our lives in so many levels. Businesses thrive there. We have such great connection, be able to connect with people from all around the world and also have access to a lot of things that we never used to have. Yeah. But at the same time. It has a lot of implications, I must say. Yeah. Um, just like smoking, actually. Social mm -hmm. media, you know, according to science and a lot of research, mm -hmm. says that it releases a lot of dopamine in our mind, in our brains. Social media? Or? Social media, yeah. And... Some other things that releases a lot of dopamine in our brains include things like um, drugs, mm -hmm. cigarettes, mm -hmm. nicotine, yeah. um, gambling, mm -hmm. which is why it is highly addictive. Yeah. Highly ad addictive. Addictive. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we're sorry. We're all having a hard time for today. It's Monday. It's yeah, Monday. It's the Monday. day we're recording this is a Monday. Yeah. But yes, I think what you mean by releasing dopamine on uh, social media is the likes you get. Yes. When you receive all this validation, it, it releases dop dopamine in you and makes you feel good. Like, oh, wow, people yeah. like me. Yeah, it's a brain candy. Yes. You, know, you feel good for the moment. Yes, yes. Um, but it also can have a lot of implications because everything is so based on what someone is... Like validation from people other are people. giving you. Yeah, yes. Not, not really... You know, you, you sometimes you forget to check in with yourself. Like, yeah. where is this coming from? Yeah. Speaking of addiction, mm -hmm. Maggie, here's <laughs> my question to you. Yeah. Do you think you're addicted to social media, man? <laughs> is this a confrontation? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Well, uh, mm, yes. It's a yes. real question. I am addicted to social media and I hate to admit it that I am, but yes, I am addicted. Well, maybe Vanessa can give you a better idea as to why I'm addicted because she hangs out with me quite a bit. Yeah, guys, I need to tell you how <laughs> I have observed uh, Maggie's addiction to social media. And let me tell you guys at the same time right now. This girl, I tell you, when I'm having a conversation with her, she'll pick up her phone in the middle of the conversation and start scrolling Instagram. For what? It's like I'm talking to you. I'm like pouring my heart out and she's freaking Instagramming in front of me and it like really <laughs> pisses me off because to me it equals to interrupting. Yeah, yeah, like interrupting me when I'm talking, <laughs> Sorry, right? sister. Yeah, I know. I mean, but that's the thing. It's like she's so unconscious about it. And another thing that I really don't appreciate is her watch buzzing her <laughs> every time she gets a message or a notification. And the thing that this girl does, she doesn't ignore the watch or the notification. She actually like lions and like clicks into it like right hey, away. I don't click all the time. I no, just no, kind of no. like... She does this. She like, yeah. she picks up the phone. She like, it vibrates. She picks up the phone and she like clicks into it and then she like closes it. It's like, why do you need to click into it? Why can't you just like ignore it? You know what I mean? Like you you have to yes. lie on the I have to notification. Because, yeah, in my defense, it's sometimes uh, work stuff that I need to attend to uh, that I cannot completely ignore for a couple of hours. Mm. Sometimes, sometimes. But let's be honest, most of the time it's just out of habit. I don't even, I'm not even conscious that I do that until you call me out. Really? And until not just you, a lot of people around me have been telling me, 
Why do you need to be on your phone? Really? Who? My sister. Really? Good so, job, <laughs> Mr. Wang. <laughs> so the other day, um, she was kind of like trying to... Talk you to know, you? Talk, and yes. then you... Mm, I tell you, this good. <laughs> trying to get talk it. to me and like... You know, at least I admit that. Uh, uh, admitting, mm, acknowledging is the first step okay, uh, yes. in any addiction. Good job. Uh, but yeah, so she texts me after that, after we hung out, like, mm. yeah, the next time I would appreciate if you're not always on your phone. Wow! <laughs> Very good, last step, Barney Wang. Much appreciated. <laughs> and then what did you say? This <laughs> fellow, huh? hey, wow. Really? No, this good. Nonsense. Terrible, <laughs> I tell yes, you. Yes, I know. I'm aware. So then I replied, only when I got the message, then I realized, oh my God, yeah, she's right. I was not aware. And mm. I really wasn't. Mm. It was just mindlessly have to check, like just putting my phone up to check the notification or even there's no notification, I have to take it out and check if there's anything. I don't know why. So yeah, so that is something that I'm <laughs> struggling with, guys. Yeah. And uh, if you're with me on this, do know that there is hope. You know, it's really hard because my life revolves around social media. There will always be postings that I need to do, you know, clients coming in and asking for stats that's just the nature of my job. But at the same time, I know I need to, you know, draw the line and have boundaries when it comes to all these things, which I have not actually been very aware of. But now that we are talking about it and now that, you know, I'm being put on the spot to admit it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. yes, I will try my best to... Um, be more aware and hopefully in a year's time maybe we revisit this topic and see how I go yeah so it's good that we're talking about it right yeah. now and if you are just like me guys high five virtual high five um, um, no high five guys <laughs> what, is, what is this I feel you it's, um, it's not an easy thing I, I, yeah, only yeah, because yeah. sometimes well let's be honest social media feeds a lot of the vice that we have, our insecurities, the need for validation, like you said, it releases dopamine when we get likes. Yeah. And sometimes I get really affected when I don't get enough likes. Mm. It is something that I don't think I've actually uh, talked about before. Yeah. Uh, especially only if it's like a, a work post, like a sponsored post mm -hmm. that requires client to feel that... Um, they get what they pay for. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, Instagram's algorithm is more than what people can see it's yeah. it's it's out of our control exactly and i hate that yeah, i really hated it i really hate it when they move the like algorithm to only posting what apparently which whichever post that gets the most like instead of like the most recent post oh really like those days it used to be like okay oh, yes, your correct. most recent post is will on be the top seen, will be visible yeah, that's more fair isn't it now it's like well, oh guys, you need to like interact and all that kind of stuff it is a business instagram is a business it's a I billion know, dollar business but it's so shitty and i freaking hate it actually like it gives me a lot of anxiety to be honest like social media and like instagram i had to really learn how to deal with it because to be fair i was exactly like you mm. like so long ago and then not so long ago like a few years ago and and i went into this crazy hole and like place that yeah. i didn't want to be in yeah. but then i realized so much of it was because of social media understand and it's so bad because it, the whole purpose of social media was to just connect people yeah connect you to your family and friends. That's how we all started on Instagram. Yep. It's like when I was studying in the UK, I love using Instagram because I could see like all my friends Posting updates yes. from home and it made me feel closer to them even though we're so far away. Yeah. At the time, there was no DMs or whatever. But seeing what what's current with them made yes. me happy. And yes. now it's just a business. But not for everyone. Even until today, like... They could be friends I've not seen for a long time, but because I've been following them on social media, I kind of know what's going on with their lives. Yeah. And I kind of like that. Yeah, but that, that, that's the thing as well. Yeah. Sometimes because these friends are people who don't have as many followers and don't have as many likes, mm. we tend to not see their posts because Instagram <sighs> right. pushes it down and Understand. you don't get to see them. Yes. And then indirectly yeah. when people like this who are not doing Instagram for their work mm -hmm. they hang out with us for example mm -hmm. who is their old time friend or they're working in this industry and they they know that these are the things that you need to do like you need to post at a certain time you need to <laughs> interact with your followers and all these kind of things they take it upon themselves mm -hmm. to also do this kind of thing so that we start to see their posts do what? what do you mean? like post at a certain time like the oh, so they do it type. too? yeah yeah, really? Yeah. But we I were just friends talking who... to a friend. Actually, Maxine was just saying it the other day. Maxine is like the producer of our show. She was saying that. No, uh, no, Vivian sorry. is our producer. Oh, sorry, you're sorry. simply talking, are you? I saw, I saw. Sorry. 
Maxine is our showrunner. <laughs> Maxine is our showrunner. <laughs> yes, of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wrong yes. idea. Now you cover. Cover line. Cover line. Okay, uh, but learning. Yes. Learning. Um, like she was saying that she she took it upon herself to like maybe also post, post at this time yeah, too. At, at this time just to make sure that she has a lot of likes but she's not doing it as a job yeah so it's not just we think it's just us but because, everyone is affected yeah because these people are surrounded by us they hear this kind of things and to them to take it upon themselves that they also they also like to see likes yeah and that makes them feel good yeah so it's literally like a cycle and it that's is, why it is. I My relationship with social media is oh my god like it's a love hate relationship guys I don't know how many of you are with me anyone in the I room I think here? everyone is with you okay. it is a love hate relationship right. for everyone who is on social media yeah. in fact we have a friend who has recently deleted his Instagram mm. and you know what we're just going to get him on the show real yes. quick Darren could you Hi please friend. join us you yes, can yes, share yes. the seat with me drag a chair drag a chair yep yeah, yep yeah. come stay with me it's fine like just So he will be the first guy on our show. Welcome, welcome. Hey, so cozy lah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're on YouTube, you can see um Darren. Blushing his his already. his blushing. His uh, what a cute boy. You want to go see? Yeah, uh, we are head over not. heels podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Single. Okay, okay. Let's head get over to the heels. point, oh, okay, sister. Uh, single or not, not doesn't matter. Later, you mm-hmm. check. Mm-hmm. Hey, cannot say check his Instagram. He's not on Instagram. Instagram. So Darren, how long have you deleted Instagram for? I think it's been seven weeks. So that's about my math is bad. About almost two months now. Almost. Yeah, All right. Correct. Okay. What was the reason that you deleted Instagram? I realized I was very dependent on it. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, waiting for the lift. Traffic light hits like two nine nine seconds. Mm-hmm. Waiting for the queue, mm-hmm. and like, just sometimes you hang out. And everyone's quiet. Yeah. Everyone whips up their phone. Yep. Everyone's on Instagram. Yeah. And then talking about people on Instagram. Yeah. And I was just like, man, I don't want to be that person anymore. I know it's so sickening, isn't it? Yeah. <gasps> wow. <laughs> This is no. Escalated when everyone, real quick. Okay, I I don't like the part where everyone talks about like, oh, did oh, did you see this? How, like when they say, oh, I saw your weekend, you did this, but I didn't see, and the person doesn't feel like they need to explain their weekend because they think that you should have seen it on their oh, right. Instagram. You oh, know? you didn't see? I posted this. You should yeah. know. Yeah. Yes, yes. And they don't bother to explain further what yeah. they did over the weekend, and right. I'm like. Do I need to see everything of yours on Instagram? Correct. Tell me, right? Yeah, but they don't. I've once asked a friend like, "Hey, how's your weekend?" He was like, "Oh, you didn't check my Instagram," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, oh dude, my gosh. it's just Instagram." Right. And yeah. immediately I muted him. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. No, no bullshit. I love it. But but like, okay, now that you've deleted it for about seven weeks, how does it make you feel? Do you feel like you want to go back, or do you feel like, hey, you know, what? I kind of like this whole no Instagram life? I genuinely do miss Instagram. You're way more updated with everyone. Yeah. But now I feel like I communicate more intentionally. Like I actually have to WhatsApp the guy. Not on Instagram now. What are you doing in life? Mm. How are you doing? Oh, old school. So like even with I Minghan, love it. I have to like, what did you do? Where did you go? And everything because I don't get to see yeah. anymore. Yes, yes. So it's more intentional when you approach someone. Yeah, that's true. And it's like you really care about this person, and he pops out in your head, and you make the effort to go text Correct. this person. And on Instagram, sometimes you see your friends mm-hmm. doing some stuff, but you don't feel like you need to ask them anything about it because you're like, oh, I already know. Yeah. Yes. I and agree. then you fail to reach out, and then you lose that connection with this person because you're like, oh, I already know she's doing this. I don't need to yeah. ask the person, Correct. right? Would you say you are a lot more connected to your friends after not being on social media yeah. or Instagram? I would say so. Yeah. Like how we talk more. I would actually yeah. call them, uh, WhatsApp. I think like what Vanessa said is because you reach out mm-hmm. wanting to know yeah. what's mm-hmm. going on, how is life. And then you also give them the opportunity to share things that they might not need to share on Instagram, mm-hmm. yeah. but they can share with you. Right, that's true. Which would have never happened if you didn't reach out. Yeah. Okay. Has anyone told you like, or oh, have you not seen like I yes. did this? Is then oh, you yeah. just tell them. Yes. What's your first response usually? I just tell yeah. them I deleted Instagram. And then they go into the shock. You know, they go like, they go <laughs> How into, like, could you do that? <laughs> Why are you okay? You know, like what's going on? And yeah. I go like, no, it's okay. It's just I was dependent. And they were like, but it's good. And I'm like. Yeah, Instagram is great. Yeah, I genuinely miss yeah. Instagram. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but that's also because I was so dependent. Wake up in the morning before mm-hmm. you sleep. Yes. And so it's been very healthy to me. Though yeah. I really miss Instagram. I think once I messaged a girl, I was like, "Haven't seen your selfies in a while. Can Aww, you please send a selfie?" You're such Aww. a sweet little. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how he flirted. So. Oh, that's one way to get some girls. Exactly. No, no, it's just you really miss Instagram. Yes, but do you feel that pressure to want to come back? Oh, do you plan to come back? 
I do plan to come back eventually. I still don't know when. Okay. But I don't feel the pressure to come back. Yeah. Even I, uh, eventually, I feel the longer that I'm off it, mm-hmm. the easier it gets to yeah. not yeah, get back sure. on. Yeah, for sure. Just like anything you do in life, right? With addiction. Yeah, and it I think you'll know time. why you want to use Instagram after your time off. Mm-hmm. Like yes. the purpose of Instagram in your life and how you're gonna use this tool much better. Yeah. With this time off, because Correct. you have resetted your intention. Yeah. Like you know what it's like not being on it so yeah. you know how good it feels and how how much of a better communication and connection you get with people. Yeah. yeah. Right? Wow. You know what? Thank you, Darren. Hey, no worries. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Now you Thank can go you back to work. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Keep it up for Darren, guys. So, for yes. being so raw and chill. Yeah, I, I really like that. So he's one of the very few people that's kind of off Instagram. I do have a couple of people, but eventually they cannot tahan and come back already. Yeah. And I tried. I tried being off Instagram. Five minutes later, I'm back on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so <laughs> my addiction is real. Um, I'm trying, guys. Um, So please do remind me if you see me. If you're my friend, you see me. Yo, Maggie. Yeah. Hey. Remember that episode? You say you're gonna try. Yes. <laughs> Call me out. I'm all. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. But as great as it is, social media can also get too much, which is why we're having this conversation. Yes. How is it too much for you? You mentioned that you fell into this deep dark hole. Yeah. And some sort of anxiety with social media. Yeah. I how th- How was that for you? Right. Right after Miss Universe. Um, I was in this really dark place in the sense that I really lost a lot of my sense mm-hmm. and knowing who I really am. And to me, it's so important to know who you really are and to stick to your values no matter what. So when I woke up one day and I knew that this was not me, like I didn't know who I was. It scared me so much. The Vanessa that you put out on your Instagram? Yeah. um, Basically, just me as a person. Okay. And because I didn't know who I was, everything that I was consuming on social media would affect me in the stupidest way or the most unconscious way like how? that I didn't even know. So for example, if I would be at this beauty brand's mm-hmm. um, event, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't get invited for um, a watch event, for example. Mm-hmm. And you feel, and I feel left like, out? Yeah, I FOMO. felt so left out and yeah. felt like, am I not good enough? And if you com- you're comparing your journey with other people yeah. on social media. And it's like a little bit of FOMO, a little bit of feeling unworthy. Yes, I and understand. Just that constant comparing. And yeah. then obviously you're looking at all these people and they look so great online. And it affects you in a way that you start to... And and it doesn't help that the comments as well are so mean. Like when I when I oh, won, yeah. I won, I had sh- really mean comments like talking about my looks and my body and all that kind of stuff. And um, I couldn't help but like do adjustments. And I was thought that I could do adjustments like you know with like the apps like mm-hmm. Made to Suit You and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think right? we're all a bit guilty of that. Yeah, I know. Um, and I really didn't like that person. But wait, when you say you got a lot of hate, yeah. What was the reason behind that hate? Because they didn't like the fact that you won Miss Universe that year? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Like, I really didn't know where the hate was coming from. But I guess it's just because I won and I was a nobody. I was a tourism graduate yeah. who just came back. Who's this person? And then, obviously, that year, there was another contestant who has been in the in- industry for oh, a really wow. long time. And sh- so, she had some sort of following. And the fans were a huge fan of her. So, they were really upset that, that I won yeah. instead of her. Yeah. Um, so the comparison upset. was there and yeah, they felt the there. need to send you hate. Yeah, send me hate from the very beginning. Like the day I won, yeah. I didn't even have time to process what was going on. Yeah, you were just filled with Because I was comments. so busy. I was being dragged on to like press conference and we finished so late. Yeah. And the next morning I had an interview. Yeah. Um, I didn't have time to look at my phone actually, but I would. I, I was getting so many messages from my friends um, and family yeah. uh, who were looking on Facebook, obviously, and Instagram at that time. And they kept sending me private messages saying like, oh, ignore the haters. Haters are going to be haters, you know, naysayers, yep. blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't understand what they were saying. Until you saw those Until messages. Until I spoke to my roommate at that time, Amanda. Yeah. Um, and she said, I think you want to stay off um, in s- social media for Probably. a while. And I didn't understand why. Until you saw Until them. I opened it and I was like, 
what? I was like, are you kidding me? These people are talking about the way I look. They're like, who is this Bobby? You know, <gasps> but they changed it to Vavi because my name is V. Oh my v. God. Starts with a V. So they were like, ba- uh, Calling Bobby. You Bobby? Yeah. And like, dethrone Vanessa Tevi Kumaris. Oh and goodness. like, you are such an ugly bitch. You know, oh and God. like, who are you? Uh, you are a clapper, basically saying, I'll just stand on the side and just clap for whoever, you know, <sighs> and just a lot of mean things. And someone actually created a Facebook page with my face on it with a huge cross on over it over your face, yeah, on my face, like with a That's cross on terrible. it, saying dethrone Vanessa and boycott Miss Universe Malaysia 2000. Oh, just because you won, and it was not even your choice, yeah, and this is like day one. From day Dude. one. And I was like, where is this even so coming that's, from? So that's how it's all spiraled down yeah, into this think, dark, dark hole you eventually got yourself into. Yeah, and I think that's why my relationship with social media is really You so didn't bad. have a good start. Yeah, It was really so unfair. They wronged you, I feel. They yeah. did not give you a chance to even show who you are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like the fact that you won, it's such a great thing. You should be celebrating. In fact, you were flooded with hate, hate. instead of congratulatory messages. Yeah. Yeah, that's, basically. That's terrible. So if you're listening right now and you were one of the haters that sent those messages to whoever you've sent before, dude, that's not cool. Please stop that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I think just hate in general, like, it's not cool. Yeah, it's not. And uh, if you disagree with someone, speak to them, like, properly yeah. as a civil adult, like what yeah. Maggie did, you know, just voice out your opinion. You can confront the person, but make yeah. sure it's constructive, not yeah. hurtful. And be objective about the reason yeah. why you're saying this. Like, for example, Vavi, why would you call someone a pig? What for? Yeah, yeah what I don't for? know. What Just for? anything. They'll call no me reason. auntie. Oh, They'll say my teeth, me off just my listening teeth to this. is ugly. I speak weird and like my body is weird and everything well i mean and hate can go on and on there will yeah. always be something for you to hate on yeah but the thing is in the beginning i was laughing about it but you know it kept going on you know so, i was like mm. that it really affected yeah. me at one point but how do you get into that social media anxiety how did it make you feel like sure people can tell you get off social media but you can't really stop yourself from going on it right i had i had to realize how bad it was and i had to really like get off it and actually at this time a lot of friends were texting me and asking me like hey you okay i'm like yeah i'm okay what's up and it was just because i was off social media for a while i think i was one of them as well yeah 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 Yeah. definitely thank you for checking i guess i was not okay but i didn't know why i was not okay i also realized you didn't reply for a while yeah because i she went cold turkey for a bit but she needed to do what she had to do yeah 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 so you went for the camp yes i went for a 10-day silent meditation course it's called vipassana Mm -hmm. it's a donation basis course and it's it's a teaching basically Mm -hmm. of how you should live a more balanced life Mm -hmm. um, so that you get rid of attachments to things, feelings and emotions. Yeah. 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 So how did that help you, you think, in your struggle with social media anxiety? I think that 10 day silent meditation helped me in a way that like, you know, how Darren was saying just now, he, he really took the time to connect with people on a real level. Mm -hmm. And that reminded me of how much that meant to me. And then it also helped me redefine how I want to use Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely one way. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's all interrelatable. I feel because you may not get hate like Vanessa did. Like for me, I feel like I've never been in a position where I received a lot of hate. Yeah. Um, and a lot of all these struggles I have with social media is often self-inflicted. Like right. I get on social media, uh-huh. I tend to compare myself with mm-hmm. people's highlight reels. Right. It is a highlight reel of people's life. Is, yeah. They don't post about arguments with their boyfriends. They don't post about, you know, the struggles they have. At least not everyone that I know. And you shouldn't. Like, yeah. why would you want to put out negativity, right? Which yeah. is why you only put out good stuff. Yeah. But the thing yeah. is, I you can put out not so much negativity, but I sometimes you can still be real about the situation. And that's what I do. Like sometimes I don't have such a great day. I, I do put it out. Yeah. But of course, I don't get into details like, oh, um, someone said this to me and I got into this fight with this person. It's all these petty stuff that I think, I think shouldn't, not, it's not needed on Instagram or yeah. social media per se. Yeah. So I don't really know how that feels like. I mean, I've gotten a little bit here and there, but not like 
and whole army of haters coming towards you, charging at you, telling you that you're not good enough, this and that. I cannot imagine the how you feel at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I can only try to relate. So the thing about social media, we all know that we all compare with one another. Even amongst friends, amongst people we follow, the celebrities or whatever influencer that is on our timeline, we compare our lives with their highlight reel. That is essentially what is happening. That's true. That's why it is so toxic because we feel like, oh wow, so nice. They go on this holiday. I can never afford a trip to Paris. Oh my gosh, she's constantly on the front row on New York Fashion Week. Oh, that's my dream. And or, or just little things like, oh wow, her relationship is so perfect. That is one thing I struggle with. Mm. Like people constantly say, oh, you guys are so perfect together, a couple goals. And I, that's not what I feel. Mm. And it does put a pressure on me as the mm. person who's like, I guess, putting out all these stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, I find myself being on the other end where I compare my own relationship yeah. or my own life with other people's. Yeah, but they also say sometimes things you put out on Instagram is what you're most insecure about. Oh, Actually, yeah. Let's dive deeper into that. Um, there has been a lot. Of, I've read a lot of articles actually saying that a lot of couples who put up a lot of pictures about themselves or videos tend to be very insecure about their relationship, which is why they need to make it up with an image of themselves like on Instagram. What I can share about my struggles with social media and the reason why I can, I'm addicted <laughs> Is that I'm, I don't know why I'm constantly on it, but at the same time, on days where I don't feel so great about myself, that's sometimes where I want to go. Right. Why though? Why? Good question, right? I am guilty of this. Sometimes when I, I think I stopped doing this for a while, but I used to do this. When I, when I don't feel great about myself, I will find myself scrolling through my photo album, find a nice photo of myself, and I'll post it up edit it nicely, post it up and see how many likes I get. And that, Mm. like you said, makes me feel great. The Mm. likes I get, the comments, oh, you look great. Oh, beautiful. It fuels my insecurity. It fuels my lack of whatever that I was needing a lot. Yeah. I find myself doing that and I realize, oh my God, what was my intention? I don't know. I don't even have an intention. I just want people to like me. Yeah. I think the intention, it all comes back to intention. Yeah. If you want to share with the intention of letting people around you know that here's my thoughts and stuff like that, do it in the sense of sharing. Yeah. Not Don't do it in the sense that you need to be better than someone or yeah. I need to be um, smarter than you or yes. slimmer than you. I need to be the hottest person in the room. Yeah. The intention has to be clear and yeah. I think that's how we should all consume it. Correct. Um, because the moment you start going in there wanting to be the best you know, you want you want to prove a point, then the whole reason you're in there becomes really toxic because yeah. you're you're in there to get validated. Yeah. You're in there to consume it in a way that will it only fuels your insecurity yes, exactly. and, and and all the negative values that you find that you need. Yeah, yeah. The point is here: just know your intention at the end yes. of the day. Why are you on social media? Like when you listen to podcasts. Your intention is to, I guess, learn something new about yourself or something that you can learn from, from the people that you want to listen to. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to YouTube, you I want- try my best to consume con- uh, consume consciously where I don't find myself mindlessly cons- uh, scrolling as much as I do on Instagram. Mm-hmm. When I go on YouTube, I usually know, okay, I want to look at this workout video. I want to see, okay, how can I uh, improve on my finances? So I will watch a lot of like yeah, um, budgeting I videos. I love watching finance yeah, videos. Or like house makeovers. Yes, <laughs> I love, I love the room makeovers. Yeah, so those kind of recipes. Yeah, so like. things like that. So, so set your intention, whatever it could be, just be mindful about it because it is so easy to get off track because that is how these platforms are designed to be. They designed it for you to go crazy on nonstop binging on it. Yeah. So that's when you need to stop yourself. And I guess it goes back to um, boundaries in our third episode that you draw the line. Okay, enough is enough. Yes. And I've got a little tip actually. So I recently started setting this um time limit notification on Instagram. I don't know if you guys know it. Has it really helped you though? I know. (laughs) (laughs) I I would just press, okay, uh, you've been on Instagram for an hour today. Wow. Just uh, just scrolling for an hour? 
yeah, I don't know. I just scroll, I comment or I post photos, whatever. Like, like I'm on Instagram for an hour. It doesn't detect you, you go how off and in on or like. Uh, I guess off and on as okay. long as you. I, I'm not very sure, but okay. most of the time I realize I'm on it a lot, and then I'll get this notification where it'll tell you, "Hey, you've been on Instagram for an hour today," and it's only like what 10 a.m. in the morning. Oh my <laughs> goodness! This is good. So yes, my addiction is real, but I'm not afraid to admit it, I and I'm pretty sure. Way, actually, yeah, I'm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. So if you guys want to do it, you can go to your Instagram and go to your settings, and you go down to your account. And look at um, your activity, and you will see your time on Instagram. Actually, yeah. So my daily wow. average is about two hours and forty-four minutes. And you can also set your daily reminder once you've reached the limit. Instagram will tell you, "Hey, you've been on it for X amount of time." So for me, I picked the limit, uh, the minimum, which is an hour, and I always hit it before the afternoon of the day, lah. So if you don't see it, you might need to um, update your app. Okay? Oh, okay. So yeah, that's a little tip that I can give you. But of course, coming back to our topic to how to consume social media, and tell oh, Vanessa I just found, found hers. It. So in comparison between me and Vanessa, my daily average on Instagram is two hours and forty four minutes, and hers is an hour thirty four minutes. Clearly, I am almost double your time. Yeah, but I'm also not that great, lah. <laughs> But she's uh, someone who is not that great on social media, so it's okay. Yeah, she yeah, she does yeah. disappear a lot. The kind of person who doesn't really reply messages yeah. until a bit later. Mm. But I am always on my phone, so if I don't reply, you means I'm definitely avoiding you, lah. Huh? Yeah, but I <laughs> I had to go through the whole journey of like you know being so distracted yes. and so off like so off balance because of my phone, which is why I right now I'm consciously being. Um, aware yeah. how much I'm consuming it. Yes. Yeah. So we'll just wrap it up with how can we consume social media intentionally? Mm. Um, be intentional with the people that you follow. I feel that is very important because you know what they say, you are the five people that you hang out with the most, you yes. know? Choose your friends wisely. Same thing with the people that you follow. These are the people you hang out with virtually 24-7. You have such direct access to, to their lives. Mm -hmm. So let's be honest, it will affect you. So the people you follow, well, maybe it's time for some spring cleaning. Marie Kondo, your um, following yeah, list. Following for because sure. I recently did that and I think it has kind of helped me. Mm -hmm. Uh, change the way I consume social media. Mm. I find myself following these people less. Yeah. So I stop comparing my lives with them. Yeah. Not as much. Mm -hmm. And I follow pages that, you know, brings me value like, you know, women empowerment pages and, you know, daily quotes or yeah. um, stuff that really helps with my well-being. Yeah. Like how when I go through a not so good part of my life, oh, this post helps me and then gives me a bit of solution. And rather than just comparing someone's selfie or someone's vacation photo and someone's, I don't know, event, going on event while I'm not, here I am sitting at home yeah. looking like this. You yeah, know? and I think even if the person's your friend, but you're somehow threatened by this person's story online. Threatened. Threatened in the sense that you, something in you is... Doesn't feel good Yes, about doesn't it. feel good. It might not be the person... It might just be you yeah. because you're lacking in your own way that you can't figure out. But if the person is your friend and her post irks you, yeah. you can mute that person. Really. That's also yeah. what I've been doing. You yeah, don't have do to unfollow. For your peace of mind. Yes. Yeah. So yes, um, of course, be intentional with the people you follow and mute them if you need to for the time being. Hide their stories if you need to. You have these options. Yes. You know, it's your choice how you want to use and utilize it. And uh, I think it's so important to make new friendships and to find your new thrive. Don't just feel like you can just make friends online because science says that one of the reasons that uh, people continuously be happy is because of the connections that they have around them. So yeah. healthy connection with real people around you and real conversations is one of the biggest factor that affects our happiness on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to make sure that as much as we're consuming all this online and we talk to our online friends, we also need to make the time to check in with the five closest people. Let's start with the five, you know, yeah. make a list of the five family members or friends or peers that you want to keep in touch with or you want to reach out to like Darren say, talk to them because these real relationships are what keeps you 
truly happy. And um, it really makes you be very intentional, conscious, and aligned with these relationships that you make. Because you're having real conversations and you get to see them in their best mm -hmm. and their worst of yes. times. Yeah. Well, another thing that I personally am still struggling with is taking breaks away from social media. Mm. Media detox. Yeah. That is something that is clearly a great way to, you know, yeah. uh, realign yourself because it has proven that anxiety, depression does reduce significantly when there is no pressure to meet the standards that you see on social media. Less comparison, less feeling, less than you are yeah. because of okay. someone else's some highlight reels, like I said. So less time spent on your phone can has proven to reduce these mental health concerns and it also improves your sleep yes. because you know of the, the the rays from the phone and yes. all that stuff and also your mind is constantly working, working just before all these things you see you compare compare how you're gonna sleep you're gonna think about it just before you sleep and it yeah. does affect it's a cycle yeah definitely and one way i really find very helpful is reading a book and mm. i am not a reader <laughs> but uh, i really enjoy reading a book nowadays because i really feel that you get to calm down your mind and Learn something new before you go to bed. And also, they say when you read something, the next day it's the freshest in your mind. Mm, and good you point. Remember it better, actually. So, yes, I am struggling with this. I am addicted to social media. I'm going to keep repeating it until one day I can say that I'm no longer addicted. Yeah. But, yes, taking breaks is something that I personally will try. I, yeah. I struggle with because mm -hmm. I can put my phone away and then five minutes later, it's on my hand again. Mm -hmm. It's in my hand again. So yes, taking breaks in between and also, if you really can't be away from social media because I understand just like how some people struggle to quit smoking drugs, you can't just go cold turkey like that, is just change the intention, change the reason why you're on it. Like for instance, use social media to hone your craft instead of mindlessly consuming it. So what I mean by this is that, um, for instance, you are great with singing, put out song covers. Yes. If you're great with drawing, um, draw put something out, yeah, every illustrate day. some things yeah. every single day where you have an intention that, hey, not only you are not no longer mindlessly consuming stuff, you are also honing your skills, improving day by day. And there is like a platform for you to put it out there. And one day when you look back, hey, I've come this far. Yeah, maybe we'll call you up and you'll come chat with us on Hate Over yeah. Meals. You know what I mean? So that is yeah. one way to, in my opinion, would really realistically help because I cannot go cold turkey. I cannot say I can delete social media. I will yeah. not do that because... I'm lying to myself. Yeah. Can I suggest some ways that you can? <laughs> yes. I think like being outdoors, being in nature can really help you. Mm. Somewhere has, that has no line and you actually like <laughs> zone out, right? It would be so, so <laughs> enriching for your soul. And yeah. uh, I think reaching out to a friend will yeah. really help. What else will help? What else do you if think If no will line, you know what you? I'll do? Hey, go Wi-Fi. Uh, go Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, go Wi-Fi. In, in, in Japan, there was this place got no, in, got no line, but then when I raised my phone, there's line. I just kind of do this. Oh my gosh. I'm addicted, guys. It's yeah. bad. Ah! Change the mindset. Tell yourself, no line, great. Be present. Yeah. Get connected to the people around you. Yes. And it is a conscious effort, okay? And know that coming from a a place where I put out content where people do follow. It is a highlight reel of my life, guys. What I put out is not everything. Mm. There are a lot of things that I don't put out. Days where I cry in bed. Days where I have huge argument with whoever it is that's in my life. Days where I feel like it's just shit. Yeah. I don't put it out there. So you don't know what I'm going through for sure. That's why I've been a bit more mindful about the things I post when I do have a shitty day. I kind of do, hey, say online that, yep, I'm not having a good day and that's okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's how I'm trying to use my platform for the greater good. Yeah. Um, just make a difference. Big or small, doesn't matter. That's true. Yeah. And I think a good point that Vanessa did mention is journaling. Mm. Because... I know some people, they put everything on social media. Mm. Their emotions, you can see this guy, this person is going through a breakup. The details, they put it on stories. Just, I don't know, like I said, get validations. Yeah, and be careful as well with whatever you put online because the moment you post it out, you can't take it back. people are entitled to say something Have about it. Have an opinion yeah, about and it. And that, that might just affect you even more. Yeah. So 
So be very careful with what you choose to put out. If it's, I think it's good to share something, but put it out as a learning, something that everyone can learn from. Yes. But you don't have to put the details online Not and rent. share your dirty laundry, you yes. know, because nobody wants to know that. Yeah. But the moment you put it out there, you give people the A reason power, to say something. Yeah, to say something about it. So be mindful with what you post yes, as well. Yeah. Because it, you could be from the receiving end, you could be the person doing it. Just yeah. intention is the core that we're trying to remind you today. Exactly. Yeah. So we have come to the end of our episode. We hope that that gave you light in some of the things that you could be struggling with. In my case, my social media addiction. And it is a journey, guys. So yeah. don't, don't expect yourself to be better in a week or two. It is yeah. a journey like everything else in life. Yeah. Um, like bottom line is social media shouldn't make you feel... Scared. Like me, in my case, social media anxiety. Why do we need to feel this way? Yeah, it's, it's self-inflicted. So yeah. find ways to, you know, take that away from your life, which was why we hope that some of the points we share would help you. And if you have better points, better ideas that you have been practicing, please, please do share with us. We are on Instagram. You can check us out at The Head Over Heels. We would love, love, love to hear from you. We're also on YouTube, by the way. So yes. if you feel like you want to, you know, see something visually, it's um, Head Over Heels podcast. You can check us out there. Don't forget our hashtag as well. It's hashtag let's get head over heels. But yes, um, we just want to end this with be conscious, be aligned and be intentional about everything that you do online and offline. Yep. So maybe the first homework that you can do after listening to this podcast is go through your following list and just unfollow or mute the people you no longer want in your life. That's okay, okay? And reach out to five people that you've been meaning to reach out for the longest time. Yes. Or just have a connection, have a tea. Have oh, a yes. little conversation. And now we're going to go for our tea, our lunch, actually. Yeah, we're super hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for tuning in wherever you are driving, drive safe. And we'll see you in the next episode. Till then, I'm Maggie. And I'm Vanessa. And don't forget to fall head over heels for yourself first and always. Bye. Bye.